Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Praise the Most High Elohim <clears throat> for you all today. Uh, Pastor Battle of Hard Love Ministry. Um, praise Yah for His goodness and His loving kindness. Praise Him for being our strength and for being our salvation. He is good to us. So, Yah, we thank you for being so good to us. Again, we just glorify you. We bless your name for you are the truth. Uh, your word is truth. And your word is a light to our pathway, a leper to our feet, a light to our pathway. We need your word. I pray y'all today for the order, the enlightenment, the illumination, the knowledge of you to be shared upon your people and also in our hearts so that we can walk in obedience, so that we can walk in your ways and to deny our own self-interest. So y'all, we thank you for being so good and so wonderful in Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Amen. So we're dealing with today part two of what is your desire. And I know, this, I know the title of the message sounds uh, funny, but I'm not, I'm not teaching about you having a desire and the Most High is going to give you your desire. That's not what I'm teaching. But I'm teaching, I'm teaching from a standpoint of is your, your desire, is it a sinful desire or is it a desire that for Yah, that you want to live for Him, that you want to be in His will, that you want to walk in obedience to His purpose. Because walking, walking in your own ways, contrary to his will, will cause trouble for your life. So the best thing for us to do is to deny ourselves and walk after his ways, walk after his thoughts. So, y'all, we thank you. And um, we're going to get today. We're going to get started. We're in the book of 1 John, and we're dealing with today 1 John chapter number 2, uh, beginning at verse um, uh, 15, where it says, do not love the world or the things of the world. But if someone loves the world, then the love of the Father is not in him. Because all the things of the world, because all things of the world, the desires of the old nature, the desires of the eyes, the eyes and the, and the particulars of life, are not from the Father, but from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever loves, whoever does Yah's will, will remain forever. So we're gonna be dealing with what's your desire? Do you do you desire to do your own thing? Or do you desire to walk after the ways of Yah? Remember, the person that does their own thing won't make it. You know, I, I remember uh, earlier uh, when I was younger, they had a song called It's Your Thing. It said, It's your thing, do what you want to do. I can't tell you who to sock you to. Remember that song? Well, in the kingdom of God, it's not your thing. And you don't do what you want to do. Because you was bought with a price. You, you are not your own. So you don't live how you want to live saying you belong to the Most High. You don't do what you want to do saying you belong to the Most High. Yeshua says this, if any man wants to follow me, he must first say no to him. So if you want to follow Hamashiach, if you want to follow Yeshua, then you got to say no to you. If you can't say no to you, you can't say yes to him. Because he may tell you something that's contrary to how you believe what you want to do. And then you got to make a decision. Are you going to obey the most high or are you going to obey yourself? See, we're, we're, we're so caught up on glamour and so caught up on people looking at us and how things look to us and, how, and, and money that we forget the things of Yah. And then we're so sensitive that it's something that's spoken contrary to what we believe and what we like, we don't receive it. Earlier this week, I was having a conversation. Uh, we was having a conversation, and um, a thought came into my mind. You know, it's funny how we can believe the Most High when we agree with something He said through people. The Most High might send a man or a woman to us, a prophet or whatever, and and, and they'll tell us, you know, Yah says you're gonna He gonna bless you with a million dollars. He gonna move in your life. We'll be quaking, doing 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 the knee the knee taps. Speaking in tongue, falling on the floor because we're finna get a new house. Because we're finna get a new car. But the moment y'all tells us to quit fornicating, or quit living in sin, or tells us something that we don't agree with, all of a sudden we don't receive that. That's not from God. Or I, I, don't, or, 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 I, I don't feel I'm ready. Our conversation this week was about ministry, about teaching. We said the most high called us to teach, and then. Then so 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 now when he when someone when someone comes to us and tells us, hey, I want you to teach, 
The first thing we say is, well, I'm not ready for that. Well, well did he call you to do that? Because the thing is, it, because it, 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 if it's not coming through the vessel that he sent to you, are you not going to receive it because of the person that's telling you that? Because see, just to, to the, the, the wise thing to do for us is to be quiet and listen and then pray about it instead of us saying, well, I ain't going to do it because that's not our desire. See, we can't lean to our own understanding. We can't live by our own desire. We have to live by the most highest desire. Mm. And, and we're going to go back to my favorite scripture that I always use, Jeremiah 17, because the first thing that we say is, well, he know my heart. He know my heart. He know what I want. He know what, what I need. Well, yes, he does know your heart. But most of the time we say that out of, out, to use an excuse to sin. So let me tell you what the Most High thinks about your heart. Jeremiah 17, um, 9 says this. The heart is more deceitful than anything else and mortally sick. Who can fathom it? So now when, it's, when, someone, when someone comes to tell you that, hey, you need to do this, and then you say, well, I don't want to do it because you don't want to receive that person or what they said, and then they say, well, you're not doing what's right. Then And, and you say, well, you know, God know my heart. Well, he does know your heart. And he just said in his own word that he don't change. He just said in his own word, the heart is more deceitful than anything else. Right. And mortally sick. Who can fathom it? He said, I, Yah, search the heart. I test inner motivations in order to give everyone, to everyone, what his actions and conduct deserve. So, so little do you know, your heart, you, you do what your heart is doing. If, 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 you, if you go and sin, and your heart, and your heart says, you know, hey, sin, then you then y'all know your heart is full of that sin. So we don't have an understanding, but when you look in the scriptures and you see the word heart, it's referring to your mind. So once you allow fear to creep in, or you allow pride to keep creep in, or you allow anything to creep in that's contrary to the word of Yah, then you need to think, is this my desire, or is this the most highest desire? Ask yourself that question. What is your desire? Is your desire to live like the world lives? Do you want to live a glamorous life? You know, do, do, you, do you want everybody to look at you? And then when they see me, I'm doing good. I, 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 I got the money rolling in on God. What's the word on God? I got the money rolling in. I'm balling now. I'm, I'm, I'm out of control for real, for real. Is that the, the, new, the new lingo they use now? Well, well what's your desire? Because if, if you desire to have things and be rich and have money, you may be missing the gospel. And you may be missing the most highest will for your life. The rich young ruler tried that when he comes to Yeshua and he asked him, what can he do to inherit eternal life? What can he do to, what can he do to know Yah? And Yeshua begins to talk to him. And he says, uh, you know, you know, follow, follow the Torah, the, the commands. And he says, you know, I've been doing all these things from, from, from a birth, from, from, from a youth. And Yeshua, the word says Yeshua looking upon him and loving him. Says one thing you lack. Go sell all that you have and give to the poor. Because you, then you have riches in heaven, treasures in heaven, right? So the word said the young man walked away grieved. So what was his desire? Did he desire to really know Yeshua? Did he desire to really enter to the kingdom? Or did he want prestige? Did he want fame and fortune? Did he want people to look at him as if he was something? Or as if he was something, somebody great? Because that's not how people should look at you. When, 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 when someone asks Yeshua to, 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 to be his disciple, you know what his response was to one man? He said, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Can you still follow him when you have nowhere to lay your head? Can you still follow him when you're rejected? Can you still follow him when people are laughing at you, ridiculing you? What is your desire for this right here, for this gospel? It's your desire to please the Most High, to follow Torah, or to compromise and follow people. You know, we, we, we're in November 2019, and you know what holiday is coming up this month and everybody getting ready for? Thanksgiving. And you got some compromising believers who want to say, well, you know, it's to celebrate our Judeo-Christian values. 
And they said they want to use Thanksgiving to replace a coat. And us, we believe in that. And you know what? I'm thankful. I'm thankful for, for having my car. I'm thankful for my mom and my dad. But you know what? We don't even know the foundation of Thanksgiving. But yet it's still, we'll still celebrate it. Not really want to deal with the massacre that took place. Not really want to deal with the religions behind it. We just want to do it because we want to say we're thankful and we want the chicken and dressing. And we want the big turkey legs. And we want all the pies and all the cakes. And our cousins coming to town. Big mama going to be here. Granddaddy going to be there. Uncle Bubba going to be there. Susan May going to be there. We're going to be getting together, having our old family good time, playing Uno and Domino's, playing Monopoly, and on Nintendo with a PS13. We're going to have a great time. So what's your desire? Do you want to compromise because you want to be with family? Or do you want to obey the will of y'all? Because Yeshua said, I didn't come to bring peace, but I came to bring a sword. I came to say that variance. I can't, a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He what I mean you're going to just go ahead and fight. There's somebody going to stand for the truth. And the one that stands for the truth, the other one might not agree with him or agree with what he's doing or agree with what he's saying. And because of that, people fall out. But see, that's time of the year we're in. Because now you got to make a decision with your desire is. Do you really desire to obey the Father? Or do you really desire to obey your friend? Obey your flesh? Obey your pride of life. Obey your uh, obey your, your eyes. Or do you desire to follow the most high? Do you desire to live holy and righteous? Or do you want to compromise because you just can't help yourself? See, let me explain something to you. Your desires should be the desires that Yah has for your life and not your own desires. Because your own desires are temptations that lead you to death. And you can't follow your heart. We just read in the heart that the heart is more deceitful than anything else. Your heart is your mind. You can't follow your mind. You can't lean to your own understanding. Proverbs 3, verse 3 through 5 says, Trust in Yah with all your heart, all your mind, and do not lean to your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge Him, and He'll do what? Direct your path. He'll order your steps. Yeah. And now, Amen. His way may not be a popular way, and his way may not be the most famous thing you want to hear. But his way is the way that leads to life. Amen. His way is the way that leads you to, to have victory and true prosperity. And not just money. But how about having shalom? You know, there's a lot of folks out here in the world that got a lot of money and no shalom. You know, billionaires commit suicide too. Did y'all know that? Billionaires commit suicide. So money can't be the answer to all things. The love of money, the love of money... It's the root of all evil. So when you put money above the most high, then we see where your heart really is. Amen? So let's go to the, to the, to the, to the letter of James. Begin at verse 1. Oh, not, not verse 1, excuse me, chapter 1. Begin at verse 12. James 1 and 12 says this. Is everybody okay? Yeah. I don't want to seem to be rambling and all over the place. I want everybody to be understanding. James 1 verse 12 says this. How blessed is the man who perseveres through temptation. For after, he, for after he has passed the test, he will receive as his crown the life which God has promised to those who love him. That word love is meaning to obey, right? If you love me, you will keep my commandment, right? No one being tempted should say, I am being tempted by God for God cannot be tempted by evil. And God himself tempts no one. Rather, each person is being tempted whenever he is being dragged off and enticed by the bait of his own desire. So when you are, when you are being dragged off Turn the echo down a bit. By, by the bay of your own desire, you're being tempted. So a temptation has to be a challenge to the word that Yah has spoken over your life. Or it has to be a challenge to the word the most I has spoken. So now you're being tempted. So when you're being tempted, you're being tempted to disobey that word that was given to you from the most high. Because it says temptation is what? 
temptation is, is whenever he is being dragged off and enticed by the bait of his own desire. Then having conceived, the desire gives birth to sin. And when sin is fully grown, it gives birth to death. Don't delude yourselves, my brothers. So, when you, so, so what is your desire? Because a temptation is when you're being dragged off and enticed by the bait of your own desire. And your mind and y'all's mind are not the same. His ways are above your ways. Mm -hmm. His thoughts are above your thoughts. Your mind is infinite. Your mind is limited. And your mind only think about what you want to see. That's why many of us have passive concerns. Limited. limited. But your mind, but that's, that's why many of us only have passive concerns. What do I mean? We'll ride down the street, we'll see a homeless person. And we'll feel sad. They're homeless. Man, I need to do something. I need to take some kings down to the Salvation Army or something. And then as soon as we get in our house, close our door, we forgot about the homeless person. We have a passive concern. None of us have an active response. That we begin to see things happening, doing something about it. When we begin to see things happening, we don't do things about it. We have a passive concern and a response. And most of us need to have active responses. That when an adversary tries to attack that word that Yah has placed over our lives, that we're supposed to do, and when we, we, we're tempted, we should do Yah's word instead of giving in to our own desires. Amen. Perfect example. Yeshua, when he goes in, 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 when you read Matthew third chapter, and you see Yeshua walks to Yochanan, uh, John the Immerser, John the Baptizer, and he wants to be baptized by John. And once he's immersed, he comes out. Then the Yah speaks, and this, this right here is my beloved son, and whom I'm well pleased. Yah says that. So that Yeshua is led to the wilderness to be tempted by the adversary. After four days, he's hungry, and the first thing the adversary does is, if you are the son of Yah. Mm -hmm. Turn these stones to bread. Right. So he tried to give him an identity crisis. <laughs> he tried to deal with his mind. Yah had already spoken. Yah had already proven who Yeshua was. There was no need for Yeshua to have to prove who he was anymore. Amen. Or, or, or are we gonna are we gonna give in to what what, what even Adam did? Mm -hmm. You know, in the garden, when Yah says, you know what, you can eat fruit from every tree out here. Cause we're going to go to something. I'm going to show you what, what happened to give to your own desires. But he said you can freely eat from every tree out here except for that tree in the middle of the garden. Right. Don't eat from that tree. Because it'll become certain that when you eat from that tree, it'll become certain that <coughs> you should die. The adversary appe uh, uh, appears and said, you know what? Did God really say don't eat from eat any trees? No, he didn't say that. But you know what? Regardless of if Eve and Adam understood what the adversary was saying or understood exactly what the word what the word says, they still full well knew. Don't eat from the tree. Let's, but let, let, let me show you what happened. Let's go to Genesis 3. Read some key to you. And then we're gonna go to Numbers 15. Genesis 3. Bearer sheet. Number 3. Chapter 3. Beginning at verse 6. See, when the adversary, when, when Yah speaks to you, you got to kill your flesh. You got to kill your desire. You got to get past how you think, what you feel, and obey his word. And you cannot look at him as being your enemy. But you got to see him as being a loving father that knows what's best for his son. And want to guide him. When I say son, I don't mean male or female. I mean positional as an inheritance, as a child. Mm -hmm. Amen. He, he knows what's best for us. And we got to follow him. Even if, if, if it don't look right. Don't lean to our understanding. Don't go on what we see or how we feel. But we stand solely on his word. That's absolute. Stand on Yah's word, you can't fall. Okay. So verse 6 says this. When the woman saw the tree was good for food, it had a pleasing appearance, and that the tree was what? Desirable for making one wise. She took some of his fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked. 
So they sold Phoenix together to make themselves loyal cause. Now she saw the tree was desirable for making one wise. But how did the Most High say, say, say it was? What did he say would happen? What did he say would transpire? He said, you you eat that tree, you'll die. Now, 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 here's my question. Is choosing to die a wise decision? You know, I've been, on, I've been on, on the earth a small amount of time, but I ain't never died. I don't have a desire to die. Dying is not in the will of y'all. He wants to give us life and death more abundantly. Yeshua came to redeem us from death, from the curse of the law, from the ways of sin. He came to restore us back to the Father, to be reconciled back to him, to give us life. As a matter of fact, he tells some of the Pharisees, he said, God is not a God of the dead, but rather he's the God of the living. No man is dead in God. Amen. So for her to make a decision to eat from this tree because it was desirable for making one wise was a bad decision. And guess what? You look like your decision. Right. You are today because of the decision you made yesterday. And you're going to be tomorrow based on the decisions you make now today. So what decisions are you making? Are you following your own desires and making your own decisions? Or are you trusting in Yah and not following your desires but acknowledging Him in all your ways? Let's go to Numbers 15. We're going to go to Numbers 15 and we're going to hit verse 37. We was, we was talking about this earlier today, this morning. That was 1537. You ready? Say, Yah to Moshe, speak to the people of Israel, instructing them to make through all their generations, through all of their generations, the Zizoids, on the corner of their garments and put with the zizi on each corner a blue thread. It is to be a zizi for you to look at and thereby remember all of Yah's commandments, misvotes, and obey them so that you won't go around wherever your own heart and eyes lead you prostitute yourselves. But you remember and obey all my commandments and be holy for your God. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Egypt in order to be your Elohim. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. So he so he wanted Israel to make zizis. Now what's happening? Why? Why did he want them to make the zizi? Because he, he, he was talking to them previously and telling them about sin. He says, so if, 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 if the community sins by mistake, what to do? Then he goes on saying, if individual sins by mistake, what to do? If you sin in that verdict by mistake, give a sacrifice. He said, but now if the individual <coughs> sins intentionally, blasphemes on purpose, high-handed sin, do wrong on purpose. Now he's guilty. Because now the sin you done intentionally is a sin that you have to think about. Right. Now I know that I have some very unpopular messages, but it's fine. Because I'm going to bring it up again. Fornication. Everybody know, hey, we got kids watching, hey, just be real. Everybody knows sex feels good. Sex feels good. It does. If you wouldn't have it. But it's not designed for, for individuals who's not married. You got to be in a covenant relationship. Yeah. You got to have a spouse. Now, I don't mean a man for a man and a woman for a woman. Yeah. I mean a male and a female. That's a covenant marriage relationship. So now when you're having sex, I don't care how you want to quake in your body, legs and stuff shake, and the eyes and the mind of the most high, it's fornication. 
So now you're punished by it. Because you're wrong. You know you're wrong. You know how you know you're wrong? Because most people, especially younger folks, they try to have since they're being married, they hide. What y'all doing in the car in the mountain? In the car in the parking lot behind the store. In the woods, if you if you if it's alright. Cause if you marry, you're gonna be in your bed, unless you, you know, role playing, doing some kind of stuff between married folks. But if you're not married, you gotta sneak and do it. That's how you you, you know it's wrong. Or let's say you're mad at somebody, you're plotting to kill them. Ain't no such thing as say I didn't mean to. No, no gun come out of somebody's pocket or a, a holster by accident. Because a gun don't have legs. Bullets don't have eyes. You got to have a hand and fingers to pull the trigger and a cock back. Then we got automatic. You got to and shoot, right? Or then you got to pull the hammer back and cock it. So when you begin to do, th do these things, you do them on purpose Knowing you shouldn't do them. So then, therefore, you got to suffer the consequences. And ain't no sense that has my feeling sorry for you because you know you were doing wrong. Just go ahead and eat that little bit. Right. Now, we have a Messiah who forgives us of our intentional sin, but it does not mean we won't have to be punished for the sin that we do. In Numbers 15, there was a man gathering wood on the Sabbath. They find him gathering wood. They take him to Moses area in the congregation and they got to sit him down to decide what to do with him. Then the Most High speaks to Moses. Says stone his man. Now why did Yah tell Moses to stone his man? I heard religious folks I heard folks who want to kill the law say that Yah was harsh. But you know what's so deep is and what's amazing is, and what, uh, what I'm grateful for, that Yah is not a man. So he's able to discern the intentions of your heart. This man Amen. was stoned Amen. because Yah had been previously saying, don't work on the Shabbat. Right. So when he brought him out of Egypt, he said, listen here, go ahead and gather all this matter. But on the, on, on the sixth day, gather enough for two days. Some folks got the next morning to go out, one night out there. He told you don't go out. Some folks tried to save some. It started it rotted out. He came again and said, Don't, don't, don't work on the Sabbath. You, you shall surely do what? Die. He warned them. He went harsh. He warned them. And I can guarantee you that man heard that from one of his leaders. Because you had Moses who spoke, they had elders who gave the people the command of Yah. Seventy elders. And the people would say, you know what? Amen. I agree. Right. I obey. So now this young man, or I don't know if he's young or old, but this man is gathering wood on the Sabbath. Knowing that the Most High says, don't gather wood on the Sabbath. So him saying, you know what? I ain't know. Don't cut it. Him saying, well, God know my heart. Don't cut it. Well, maybe he was cold. Mm. Well, put on some blankets. <laughs> Go to your brother's house. Do whatever you got to do to obey Yah. <clears throat> yeah. Don't put yourself in a situation that will cause you your life. Don't put yourself in a situation that will hinder your life. But obey him. Don't follow your own desire. And don't give yourself an excuse. I used to all the time give myself an excuse, especially when it came to fornicating. I love her. God knew my heart. I was a fornicator. If I would die, I would have went to hell. I had a man come to me and tell me about fornicating, I wouldn't stop. So I had to have an emergency surgery in the same area I was messing up in. Then my old pastor came to me, and I wanted some sympathy from him, and he said, you know, uh, Minister Bell, I was praying for you, and uh, I pray to ask the most, ask the Lord to hit the other side if you keep on doing it. That hurt my feelings so bad. <laughs> when you even say that. But guess what? I wouldn't quit. And then even after I got uh, uh, healed, I tried to do it again. And try to have an excuse that I'm going to make sure I'm still working. That was my excuse. 
I want to make sure I'm still working. See, we, we, we come up with all kinds of lame excuses in order to sin against the Most High. Most High said, you know, that tree, well, you're going to die eat from it. But Eve said, but Eve thought in her mind from the adversary, the tree is desirable, and I can be wise. That ain't what he said. But you know what? The fool despises wisdom and instruction. And you gotta ask yourself, what are you? Am I wise or am I a fool? Because if you are wise, then you will listen to the words of Yeshua. And you'll do them. If you're wise, you'll follow Torah, you'll obey it. With the help of the rule of Hakodesh, you'll obey. If you're unwise, you will follow your own heart's desires. And then guess what happens? Trouble. Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews 10. Because listen. The adversary want to kill us, y'all. Everybody want to cry that we want to have life, but we don't want to do what it takes. Or we, or we want a shortcut. We want a microwave. We want to live fast. It's like somebody saying they want to be rich, or they want to have money, they want to be lucrative, and they go sell drugs, or they try to hustle, hustle people. You're doing, you're doing it wrong. Right. They don't, want, they, don't want, they don't want to work at it. They don't want to go to school and get an education to get what they need to make to, to, to make the money. They want to go and get it the fast way. And then when, they, when, they're, when they're punished by it, all of a sudden the punishment is harsh. And, I, I, and I'm not being insensitive. You know, I understand, you know, I look at, I look at the, um, the news and, and, and you, got, you got the prison reform act going on, right? Because we got, we got people that's getting too much time, harsh punishment. Too much time for their sins. And so people say, well, it's not fair for a person of color to get 20 years for a, 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 a 20 dollar rock of cocaine and a, and a Caucasian person would get probation for the same amount, amount of drugs. Well, that, okay, well, you, that, that's correct. It's not fair. But hold on, wait a minute. You ain't got to see the cocaine. Right. You, you don't have to rob. We complain about the sentencing. But never look at our own actions. Right. And that's the problem. That was, Cain, that, that was Cain's problem. Cain said, you know, my punishment is greater than I can bear. He never apologized. Then when you go look at his family, five generations later, you see Lamech come in. He brags. He goes to his two wives, Adah and Zillah. Say, listen, you two wives, I killed a man for wounding me. And the king got to be avenged seven times, then I want to I want to be avenged seven, <coughs> seventy-seven times. Wow. Okay. Never ever was remorseful, never ever repented, never ever sorry for what they done. They just didn't want to deal with the punishment. Ain't that something? Ain't that how we are? Do we, do, we, 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 we want to do wrong with it and then don't uh, want to do right? My wife, we, 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 grew, we, we grew up on some crazy songs. And my wife do not like the song, Me and Mrs. Jones. Now, that's a nice song, I thought. Uh -uh. He said, we got a thing going on. We meet every day. Really? At the same cafe. Six thirty. <laughs> And no one knows we're there. But they both married. I can't stand. Holding hands, making all sorts of plans. Here, Mrs. Young, we got a thing going on. Not understanding that they ain't adultery. Mm -hmm. Big time. And we be a groove to them, to them songs. <laughs> secret lovers. Se secret lovers. Yeah. And we be grooving. Number one hits. <laughs> what that song? All night, hey, oh, it's see. two o'clock. No. Come function. <laughs> Can I just come? I've got to go and hold you. Oh, oh. And we really are just grooving. How? <laughs> That's how we do. And we have a desire to go have us a Mrs. Jones. Glorify the Sabbath. 
glorifying sin. Now understanding that Mrs. Jones, Mr. Jones, got a 45 and gonna kill you and her. And they catch y'all. He, he, he wrong. You wrong too. See, we gotta think about these things before we do them. Amen? Amen. Turn on to Hebrews 10. Whew, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Because I'm hot. Hallelujah. Hebrews 10, verse 20, 26 is what I was going to I got to find them. My glasses are getting too big and so on. Okay. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 26 says, For if we deliberately continue to sin after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer does what? Remains a sacrifice for sin. But what happens? But only the terrifying prospect of what? Talk with me. Judgment. Of raising fire that will consume the enemies. So, so hold on, wait a minute. So, if we sin on purpose, then from the eyes of the Most High, what are we? His enemy. Do you know that if we do wrong on purpose, that the Most High considers that going against Him? Right. I've never seen in the Scripture. Well, he just sits back and lets somebody go against him without responding to him. When you sin against him, he come, he, he talk to you. He holler at you. As they say in 2019. Let me holler at you for a minute. Let me talk to you for a minute. Let me deal with you for a minute. And he going to deal with you for real. See, everybody want to live or don't want to do things that we, want, that, that we need to live. Instead of you having uh, Mrs. Jones and a thing going on, Get you a wife with your last name. That's right, right. You marry her, and y'all meet in the open every day at the same cafe. <laughs> right. Instead of having you a secret lover, have you a daytime lover where they can see you daytime and nighttime. <laughs> Instead of coming over her house at 2.30, just roll over and kiss her because you're already beside her and y'all are in your own bed in your own house. Right. Instead of putting yourself in detrimental situations that can cause not only your physical body to die, but your soul to perish in Gehenna. Or you to be cast into outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen? Amen. He says, so someone, listen, someone who disregards, because, because people say, well, that's, that, that, that's the old law. We ain't got to follow that no more. Well, that's foolishness. Well, anyway, let me, let, me, let me read. Let me help you then. Someone who disregards the Torah of Moshe is put to death without mercy on the word of two or three witnesses. Because this young man got caught gathering wood, right? Mm -hmm. They found him and brought him to Moses. He was stoned to death because somebody saw him, right? right. That was, that's what happened to him. Well, listen to this. Think how much worse would a punishment be deserved by someone who has trampled underfoot the son of Elohim, yeah. who has treated as yeah. something common, the blood of the covenant which made him holy and who has insulted the spirit giver of Yah's grace. Mm. Wow. Think about that. Think about that. So how about, let's fix our desires. What is, yeah. So ask yourself at this question, what is your desire? Just like years ago we asked the same question, here it is years later, here's my question. Ponder this question I'm going to ask. Can you afford to love what God hates? Ask yourself that question. When you want to go do what's wrong, when you want to follow your own desire, can I afford this? The price too high. You don't see some prices. You don't win the store and see something that you just know you can't afford. I've seen things in stores this worth a whole year's salary. I know I can't get that. I can't pay it outright. Can't get no loan for it. I can't pay no loan. <laughs> I don't even want it. I'm good. I'm satisfied right here where I am. And not living above my means. But you know, people who live in sin live above their means. Pay high prices. Yeah. You know, in the natural, if you can't pay a bill, people sue you. And on top of that, you get bad credit. Imagine how your credit, ask yourself, what is your credit rating with y'all? 
you know, in, in, in the real world, 550, my credit has been down before to 514. That's how bad I was. I was a terrible bill payer. Man, they won't pay no bill. Look here, we'll avoid the bill collector. <laughs> hit, 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 ignore. And let me explain something to you. Avoiding the bill collector does not make the bill go away. It shows up. It will show up and show out. <laughs> they will not only come to, they'll come to your job. <laughs> they'll ask you, hey, how you doing, uh, Carrie? And you say, hey, how you doing? Do I know you? You should think he's a video, you'd be a certain take out and run. <laughs> hey, what's this? Oh, it didn't get me. It got to. You. you can't escape. Amen. So even when it comes to the most high, you can't escape tearing your credit up but not doing what you gotta do for him. So you gotta get past how you feel. And follow his desires. Amen. You know, a lot of candy make your teeth hurt. Man, listen. My son, one time, a couple of years ago, we went, we, me and him went on a spree. Now later, now later, spree. We go to the, to the dollar store and eat now later. Now, I went to the store by a month straight and ate now later every day. Man, all of a sudden, man, my teeth started to hurt so bad. Woo! I'll give you here today. Man, the pain is too late to be all down on the side of your jaw, be in your head. Your tooth hurt right here, your head hurt right there. You can't sleep. You can't, the wind, but I'm trying to work the wind hit me. I gotta sit down, I gotta put my mouth. That's how bad it is. Same thing when it comes to living in sin with the most high. You can't continue to keep doing something that you know you should not do, and then all of a sudden don't think you're not going to pay for it. Right. You right. can't smoke a pack a day, or 12 a day, and then you get lung cancer and think the most high man, what, what have I done? What? Right, right, right. You can't keep continuing to have sex and you're not married, and, 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 and don't think you'll get a baby. Listen, I've had sex without being married. And I had children without being married. It's not easy paying child support and taking care of your family. That's difficult. And I've done, I'm very transparent, and I've done that. It's not easy trying to pay a bill that you should have paid and still got to maintain your other bills. And no sense getting frustrated and upset about it. Because you, you did it. Come on now. And we don't want to be accountable. We want to give in to these desires that's causing death on us. But we get mad because the punishment is greater than I can bear. Mm -hmm. But you got to learn how to de deal with the punishment. Eat the punishment. Because if you don't want to deal with it, then do what's right. Absolutely. Let's live right. Isn't that right? That's good. Let's live holy. No, it ain't easy, but you got the help of the Rook Hako Desh that will help you live a life pleasing to God. Yeshua says, repent to Shua. Turn from your sins back to Yah. He said that, right? Then he started talking to him. He said, listen, I understand you're having tough times, and I know <coughs> that things in your life are not going right, but don't worry about what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat. Don't worry about all that. He said, look at them lizards in the field. Solomon, all of his glory was not as beautiful as one of those little lizards. Yes. He's telling them how the most high lust was so much that even the hairs on their head is numbered. He's telling them how the sparrow don't even work, tore, but how Yah feeds them every day. Amen. Then he asked him a question, are you not much more than a sparrow? The stuff in the field that dries up, put into the oven. Yeah, he tell them all that, right? He said, but he said, he said, but rather, what, what is your responsibility? Seek ye first yes. the kingdom of Elohim and all of its righteousness and things you need to be added. So if you need this in your life, seek y'all's kingdom first. Amen. I heard my good friend say this morning about how he don't feel worthy about saying he's certain things and he just want to be righteous. And the word says that blessed are those that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And what's righteousness from God's perspective? Doing what's right from his perspective. I just want to do what's right. That right there is what qualifies you. That's what will help you make it in life. Not following your own desires, but being humble. Denying yourself. Walking in humility. 
And, that, and not just give it in. You cannot follow Yeshua and keep saying yes to you. You got to say no to you. Rid yourself of your old nature. Say no to you. Pick up your execution stake and follow him. Be ready to be crucified. Be ready for the old you to be killed off. And of course it hurts. Man, look at here. It hurts. It don't feel good at all. But it's all right to walk by faith. It's all right. Other the Sabbath, is walking by faith. You know it, don't you? Being obedient. Eating clean. Walking by faith. Thinking about it before you do it. It's walking by faith. Hallelujah. I'm done. So listen, as I said earlier, can you afford to love what God hates? Are you able, are you willing to say no to you and yes to him? When I was younger, when I first got saved, well, excuse me, born again, I used to say, <laughs> I used to, I used to, it used to be hard saying yes. It used to be difficult for me to say yes to your will. Yes to you. I did not want to say yes. You know why I did not want to tell the Most High yes to his will? Because I thought I would lose something. But I've grown in my walk and I realized he knows what this means. So I'm willing to lose whatever don't please him. He knows I love my family. I don't know if he's going to take them from me. He loves them too. But those material things, those friends that's causing you to stumble all the time, you need to lose them. You need to drop that zero and get with that hero, the most high. You know, as a woman, let me, let me tell you this, women, because I know some women are listening to me. If you were that knucklehead, he punching you upside your head. Run. Leave him. Man, too. Woman jumping on you, beating you up. I, leave. If you're around that crowd and you're trying to get free off drugs, come on. Change your environment. Change your life. You don't have to remain where you are. You don't have to stay where you are. If, if, if you don't like how you look right now, well, remember this. You look like your decision. Amen. So if your life is hard, you may have made it hard based on your decision making. And the word says the way of a transgressor is hard. So we need to change our thinking. Change how we talk, change how we walk, and walk in righteousness. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Yah, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for loving on us and keeping us. For you are our strength. You are our refuge. And I ask you, Yah, to help us to walk after your desires, after your ways, to follow you and not follow our own desires, our own ways, but help us most high to surrender ourselves to you, to be obedient, to love on you according to how you want to be loved on. Help us to, to, to say no to us. Help us to learn your word. We understand that you give us grace and there's compassion and you deal with every individual on our own level of comprehension. And we thank you for all of that. But y'all help us to grow and not be stagnated or not be retarded spiritually that we can't grow and everything is defeated or die. But help us to grow in you and live for you and live a life pleasing to you. We don't want to miss out on your purpose. We don't want to be like the five foolish virgins who did not have oil for their lamp. We want to be like, like the five wise virgins that we're ready for you. When you come, we can go on, go in with you. We need you. We ask you to help us. And we thank you for helping us. In Yeshua HaMashiach's name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Shalom, everyone. <laughs>